Hello and, and welcome back to the Bullofile channel. And I thought I'd do a little video today about shipping, how I ship, when I ship, when I don't ship, and how I don't ship. <laughs> so, number one, the most important concern for a boa breeder when shipping an animal is the safety of the animal. Number one. Not the, the, the anxiousness with which you're awaiting uh, uh, acquiring the animal is not as important as the safety of the animal. Getting the animal out of here so I don't have to clean it and feed it anymore is not as important as the safety of the animal. And we're going to get into that in great detail in a few minutes. But number one, boxes. Every boa that I ship is shipped out of a box that I make. So I don't make the cardboard. I order the cardboard from Uline. But I cut my own styrofoam to go in the box because I'm a firm believer that styrofoam insulates the animal. Duh. <laughs> so I don't use half inch loose fitting styrofoam. I cut one and a half inch styrofoam that goes in every one of my boxes. The box is lined with this one and a half inch styrofoam, top, bottom, and sides, and it fits very, very tightly. It doesn't just slide around, it's not loose. The most important thing in maintaining the temperature or the warmth of the animal is the security of the lining of that box. So if you have a lightweight cardboard box and half inch styrofoam and it fits in there loose, there are myriads of places where cold from outside or heat from outside can seep into that box. The animal only has its own body temperature to maintain the temperature within the box when you package it. So if it's really cold outside and the animal is 85 degrees, you're putting a, a small, you know, maybe 100 gram piece of animal inside of the box, which sometimes is a bigger box than this for some people, and expecting that to maintain 85 degrees in this box that's lined with very thin styrofoam that doesn't fit very tightly, um, which oftentimes or most of the time isn't an issue when the temperature outside is nice, it's temperate, it's not really hot and not really cold. But when it is really hot or it is really cold, then the quality of the box matters. And the quality of the seal around the box matters. You have to have some ventilation, but all this extra vent, all this extra seepage of temperature from outside into the box is completely unnecessary. You will have to have a certain amount of ventilation, but not very much. So again, I use inch and a half styrofoam. And then within that box, I have the boa in a bag. Actually, I don't have a boa, but uh, I'm just gonna, just to show you how I do it. And then I line the inside of the box with some wadded up paper so the boa isn't just bouncing all over the place in the box. A lot of times your FedEx guys, when they're walking up to the house, they're juggling the box. So you have to consider that. They don't, they don't know what's in it, it's just a box. So, I use a bag, which my daughter sews up. So we sew up these bags, she sews up these bags. And then I don't use zip ties. I despise zip ties. Zip ties are the, uh, the bane of my existence. <laughs> the the zip, tie, uh, zip tie usually ruins the bag. So in order to get the zip tie off, you've got to get a like a wire cutter, snip the zip tie, and usually you're gonna snip the bag. So you ruin the bag, the bag can't be used again, which isn't a big deal, but it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, and if you tie the bag in such a tight knot that it cannot be untied, that's ridiculous too. So it leaves you the option maybe of getting a scissors and cutting the bag, which could potentially risk the animal. What if the tail is up near the end of that bag and you don't feel it? What if you're reckless and the animal's head is up there and you get get up here with a scissors and you cut it, you snip off the end of its nose. I mean, I've never done that, but I mean, these are things that could happen with people that are not 
been super careful. So I use tape, masking tape. And on the end of the tape, I fold it over itself so it's got a little tail on it. So that the customer, you, when you get the animal, you just grab the little taily poo. Very easy. And you unwrap it. They don't come undone. I go around several times. And then that wraps around the end of the bag. And in case you want to look at the animal, which I always do, when a new animal comes in, I want to check it out. Even if I'm not ready to set it up, then I'll put it back in the bag. So now, if you have tape, you can put it back in the bag and reseal it until you're ready to set it up. If you're going to do a quarantine thing, you're going to spray the bag with Permectrin, which is what I do whenever anything new comes in. I always spray the bag with Permectrin. You can do that. And so I unwrap the tape. Or you unwrap the tape if you're getting one from me. And then the bag, if you if you notice, the bag is folded over on itself. The bag isn't like this with the tape around it. Because if it's like this, there is a possibility, if the tape isn't tight, tight enough, that the snake can weasel its way out of there. You don't want that. But if you fold the bag, you twist the bag up, and you fold the bag over on itself and then tape it. Now there's a sharp corner they can't get around. There is no way they're getting out of that bag when it's taped. So that's how I do the bag. And the animal is in the bag. Ta-da! Not an animal, just a cup. So that shows how I do the bag and the animal. Weather is a very important thing. We're going to get into that. So the sturdiness of the box is very, very important as well. I've found uh, sometimes the box comes and it's crushed on a corner. None of my boxes. The only time, the only time that I've ever gotten a box of this quality shipped to me in 17 years or so since we, since the reptile community started using overnight shipping instead of to the airport. The only time that, that I've ever gotten one of this quality is when I've gotten one of my own boxes back, which is interesting. So anyways, you're going to get a really good quality box if you order an animal from me. And this box is very, very sturdy. I'm going to show you just how sturdy it is. Now you would never do this with your box, would you? You can take this box. And you can put a boa file on top of this box. This box will hold 220 pounds of boa file muscle. <laughs> Anyways, I'm on the box. There's going to be other clips that's going to show you what it looks like with me on the box. This box is very, very solid. Now, regarding weather, weather considerations are at the top of my list when it comes to shipping an animal. And there are a number of things that people don't think about regarding weather. So I take boas, when I'm shipping them, I take them to my local FedEx uh, hub, which is about an hour away from where I live. And I drop them off at between 4 and 5.30 in the afternoon. So number one, the most important temperature I'm thinking about is what's the temperature like the day I'm shipping right here? Because it's going to go from my vehicle, my temperature controlled vehicle, after being in my temperature controlled baby boa room, to the FedEx hub, where their temperature indoors is controlled as well. So when I say controlled, it's going to be between 70 and 80 and when it gets to FedEx, then it goes inside their warehouse. And then the, the shipment at FedEx goes from there to Kansas City in a truck. They pack it into one of these little units that slides right into a, uh, an airplane. Or maybe just in a truck, a parcel van. But from FedEx to Kansas City, it's an hour and a half drive. So it's an hour and a half where I'm not in control of the temperature anymore. 
And if it's 90 degrees outside, it's 90 degrees in the truck. So now the BOA, which has been 85 degrees, is going to get incrementally a little bit warmer, right? Gets to the airport, and then it goes through their processing and ends up in one of these, I don't even know what you call them, these capsules that they put all of their packages in for overnight shipping. So everything that I'm going to ship is going to go either to Indianapolis or to Memphis in the evening. So I need to be concerned about what the temperature is like in Indianapolis or in Memphis if I'm shipping to the east. If I'm shipping to the west, then I need to be concerned about what is the weather like in Salt Lake City because those animals go through Salt Lake City ultimately to you in Washington or in California or Nevada, wherever it's going. So I have to be aware of the temperature here I want it under 82 degrees if I'm going to be shipping from here. And I want it above about 30 degrees if I'm shipping from here. So when it gets to Memphis or Indianapolis or Salt Lake City, that's where the greatest danger is. That's where it's going to be for the longest period of time, completely out of my control. And what's the temperature there? Well, I want the temperature somewhere between 30 and the low, very low 80s. There's nothing I can, there's nothing I can do to cool it. I can warm it with uh, heat packs, which I don't like to use unless it's really cold, because animals, boa constrictors, never die from the cold unless they become completely frozen. But they can definitely suffer damage from being overheated. So that's why we're so con concerned about the temperature, the high temperature. Uh, especially in the summer months. The temperature here varies a lot. And we have a lot of heat in the summertime, but we will have periods of time where we'll get four or five or a week, four or five days or a week, where the temperature is only a high of about 80. Now, the temperature I go by isn't the temperature it's going to go down to at night because it isn't shipping at night. I'm dropping it off in the late afternoon. That's the temperature I'm concerned about. When it gets to Salt Lake City, Memphis, or Indianapolis, I'm concerned about the temperature that's going to be there. I want it in the very low 80s. Uh, if it's 90, that's too hot because the sun is going to be shining on the planes. Sun's going to be shining on the trucks. Sun's going to be shining on those containers that they move into the planes. And I don't know how hot it's going to get. I don't have control over that. So I have to do what is most important for the animal. Now, it ships overnight. Temperatures are always coming down all over the country overnight. And then when it arrives at your location, you're going to pick it up at your local FedEx hub. So what's the temperature where you are? Well, it almost always is going to be fine. Most parts of the country in the morning, it's going to be quite a bit cooler. And so that is not as big a concern for me. Your high temperatures, if your nighttime temperatures drop way down considerably. Now, there have been times when I was shipping to Nevada or uh, Utah where it didn't cool down overnight, but their temperature is pretty very, their temperatures and weather is pretty variable. So we'll pick a day when it works and it's safe for the animal. If you're unable to wait and you have to have immediate satisfaction, get that animal right now or that guy is screwing me. That's not how it works. <laughs> I'm trying to do what's best for the animal. So if you're unable to wait until I deem it sa safe, I'm the professional. I'm the one who shipped thousands and thousands of boas this way. You have to de defer to my judgment to pick a day when it's going to work, temperature-wise and schedule-wise, for me and you. My schedule is almost always going to work. I ship on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, for the following morning delivery, I never ship on Thursday, never ship on Friday. Because if it gets delayed on Friday delivery, it can be stuck for a whole weekend someplace. That is not good. So we ship on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, overnight, priority overnight, to be delivered by 1030 in the morning. You pick it up at your local FedEx hub. Your local FedEx hub will hold it for you. If you can't get there at 1030 in the morning, you can't get there till four, they'll hold it, but it's indoors, someplace where the temperature is controlled. So if something goes wrong, temperature-wise, 
I'm the one that's going to be responsible. So you have to be sympathetic to that. I'm the one that's going to foot the bill on either sending you a refund or providing another animal that you accept, that you accept as perfectly fine uh, in lieu of getting the original animal if something went wrong. So I've been doing this for thousands of animals. I have never one time ever lost an animal during shipping, shipping at overnight FedEx. I've had them take till the next day before, which is oh nerve wracking, but it's don't call FedEx and complain to them. Call me. Uh, it's not the fault of your driver. Don't scream at him when he, when he delivers or when you go to the hub and pick it up. The lady at the counter or the guy at the counter that's checking it out to you, it isn't his fault. It's the system. And there is nobody you can talk to or complain about the system to. You can complain to me. I can take it. I have broad shoulders. And I'm happy to do that. That's part of my customer service. But there's nothing we can do about it. So we've got to work around, sort of work around the system and realize that there are humans involved. Nothing ever goes perfect. But when you get your animal, you're going to be happy because it's going to look considerably better than it looks in the pictures that I've taken. On my pictures, the color is always going to be a little bit muted. The colors are always going to be a little more vivid when you get it. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And uh, probably not very entertaining, <laughs> but at any rate, I enjoyed doing it. And uh, subscribe, hit the like button, hit that bell for notifications. And the next time I put out a video, you'll be notified. And thank you for watching the Boophile channel.